Hey YouTube, how are you? I hope you're all good. So this video, it's going to be <clears throat> probably, I don't know how it's even going to come together. Okay, this is kind of random, but I wanted to speak about, I was supposed to do a video on narc management if you had a narcissistic individual or another toxic individual possibly harassing you online. I touched on it a little in my uh, drama management video, but I'm going to specifically do a mini series starting with this one today on what not to do if you have somebody targeting you online or coming after you okay so I just hope this all comes together so <clears throat> if you've fallen out with somebody okay and you are no longer friends you definitely know at that point the type of person that you're dealing with okay so you might have been confused or not necessarily a hundred on what they were while you were friends but once you fall out with them you definitely come to realize with the emotional terrorism and social harassment what you've been dealing with for example um, I'll use some examples from my own life okay so going to the houses of your real friends and um, telling them all about your loads of lies and um, turning up in your local store harassing the owner for information about you um, turning up at your children's schools harassing parents mother other mums of other kids in the school because they know that you're friends with them okay um, turning up at your uh, family members workplaces for example my um, a sibling of mine at one time worked at the prison and at prison at the prison for lunch all the prison officers and the SOs would go to um, this pub for their lunch okay now I didn't even know which pub my sister was going to for lunch but this person turned up at this pub and went over to the prison officers and the other prison staff and started asking them if they knew my sibling or where my sibling was because they needed to, to speak to her about me okay these people when they mess with you they mess with you big all right the idea behind it it's all psychological warfare okay it's punishment because you've walked away mixed in with rage that you've had the audacity to walk away mixed in with huge narcissistic injury typically okay so these people when you know them they're often quite charming initially and they flatter you they work their way into your lives and they do that on purpose they start with the texting they wanting to talk to you all the time they want to build up a sense of a serious relationship very quick okay so what i mean by that is you know like how over time you have a deepened friendship with somebody they try to recreate that in a shorter window of time okay because it makes the target feel secure Okay. And usually when they come around, initially, these narcissistic types, they keep an air of mystery or curiosity about them. Okay, They're very careful to pique your interest so you want to know more about them and you um, end up engaging them, talking to them, becoming friends with them or having a relationship with them, whatever. Okay, But when you walk away, shit hits the fan in a big way because they can't handle this huge fracture to their very 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 tender and weak ego okay so if you have one now we're not talking about real life today we're going to be talking about online so if you have one coming after you online the chances are they know your routine okay so the first thing you need to do is change your routine by doing that you take the floor the rug the rug you take the rug from under their feet because they're used to your pattern. They, all of the things that they were doing during the friendship or the relationship, okay, they will have been things that tell them all about your reactions, all about the way you think, all about the way you feel. So they know how to get those reactions and emotions to come out of you. They know exactly which buttons to push 
where your boundaries are because they perform shit tests which are, which i've spoken about in another video where for example they will say they will tell you a homophobic joke or a racist joke okay now if you were to laugh they'd go they'd try something else but say if you don't laugh at the homophobic or racist joke and you're like that is not funny why why would you say that oh no no sorry i didn't mean to offend you it was just a joke it was just a joke but they record that in their mind because they know now the sensitivity of where some of your boundaries lie where you will speak up and say something okay so then they'll do other things they may <coughs> make flirty jokes with you okay and again the flirty jokes aren't anything about because they like you they're incapable of like they're testing your radar they're testing they're trying to gauge where you sit on that line okay so if you're a little bit flirty back they will go a step further to say oh well she didn't mind that so i'll try and move it up a bit and take it a bit further and if you still don't say anything it just keeps going and keeps going until you're met with possibly a person that believes they want to have a relationship with you and you're like whoa no what are you talking about no i just thought you was messing about okay it's they're testing your boundaries that's why in my other videos i make a huge thing about boundaries they have to be solid and firm if you don't find homophobic or racist racist jokes funny no they're not funny say no they're not funny don't feel inclined to not say anything because you're worried about how it may offend the other person because who normal is telling you those jokes anyway okay who but they do off the wall things to check where your boundaries lie so say you've had the friendship or you're having the friendship during the whole entire time they will be profiling and reading you to find where you lie on what gauge right and how you handle things because they know at some point they know it's going to go pear-shaped okay so all of these tiny details about you are recorded stored noted all right not to be forgotten so then when you break away or the friendship disintegrates they've got all they've got a full read on you they know how to fuck with you okay so for me for example okay in real life i'm kind of a private person so for somebody to be going round to all these different random people into my local store um harassing other mums at school, turning up at my siblings' workplace where they'd all gone to have lunch, I found that beyond violating, okay? Like, next level harassment. So they know how to get what reactions and emotions out of you by, by the read that they've got during the time that they got to know you. And again, that's why it's important that when people come around, you aren't just an open book letting them all in to where your reactions are your emotions how you feel about this how how you feel about that you need to keep a bit you need to be a bit vague and a bit reserved okay in order to protect yourself friendships take a period of time to build up you can't fast forward them okay you might think you can because you feel that connection that connection at the beginning where there's an air of mystery and there's some curiosity and you think Oh, this person kind of gets me they're kind of really cool all right seem really charming you know they flatter you they fill up your ego with lots of feel-good chemicals the endorphins are rushing the oxytocin the all of it okay they make you feel high then because they're talking to you they make sure to be talking to you most of the day most of the night okay that's how they take control of your brain chemistry no joke okay because you begin to associate them that you feel good when you're around them okay because they lay this flattery on the charm they really want to get to know you they think you're a fantastic person that you're so lovely they want to share all their secrets and all their life with you okay and it produces in the brain the feel-good chemicals okay which they use and save for later because then when they exit your life, <clears throat> not only do you have the emotional side of it that you have to deal with, mentally and physiologically, you feel depressed and low, like 
a really big thing's gone out of your life even though you may hate them or not like them when the friendship breaks up you will have a physiological reaction to part the parting of that friendship okay that's the trauma bond that's been built and put in place okay they fill your brain up with feel-good chemicals right they're sure to keep that going at a steady rate each day okay keeping you feeling high off their uh, energy their kind words their charm all the rest of it so you break up you're falling out and you have the low okay the craving okay you just want to speak to him you really miss him okay most of that is nothing about missing them it's because the thing that was making your brain feel good has now gone away and it's addictive physiologically okay literally it's addictive this is a thing it's not a fallacy or you know a myth this is a thing they become in charge of lifting your mood up to the point that your brain is re releasing dopamine oxytocin all the endorphins all the feel good the feel good high buzz that you get when you're around certain people and you're laughing and you re and you feel like they really get you okay so when they depart they take that with them and you're low because part of them doing a lot of the texting and being in contact with you a lot during the day evening or night that's to sustain that mental control now consciously they're not necessarily aware of all of those um sorry but it was vibrating so they're not necessarily aware consciously that that's the science 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 behind it right but they know how to draw us in instinctively they know and understand this um and then they know how to they understand that by flatter flattering and boosting your feel good chemicals in your brain lifting you up they understand on some level that um they need to do that okay that's part of the manipulation so they've gone now they've gone you're hit with the low and then the harassment starts okay because they have understood and profiled you they understand all of your reactions they understand all the things that bother you okay so they're going to be all the angles they that they use to come back to hurt you okay is it going to make it any any more beneficial if i explain to you why they need to do that do you need to know why they need to do that i don't know i don't want to make this video too long okay you can't you are a possession to a narcissist okay there as and when they need it okay that possession doesn't leave the narcissist only when until only when they decide they want to discard it and get rid of it okay and then if they decide that later at a later date that they want to go back and hoover you up and pick you back up and use you again they feel entitled enough to be able to do that they don't see you as a fully functioning um autonomous individual they don't see you as that okay so get that through your mind they're not looking at you as a human being with empathy feelings and emotions they see you as an object all right so you trying to explain to them please stop leave me alone they're gonna really enjoy that okay because it's not about it's not it's not about um any attention is good attention all right if a narcissist feels jealous right they want to inspire jealousy into their target so they will project transfer they will transfer how they feel onto the target and how they will go about doing that is by doing things that they know will make you jealous so you flip out and react and they get a they get um almost a sexual release from that they get some kind of relief a hit a high from you flipping out and all this jealousy spilling forth okay if they feel enraged and angry because they're so like the vulnerable narcissist or the covert narcissist covert covert 
or shy or, vu or vulnerable narcissist. They do their manipulation, most of it, under the cover of darkness. It's all smoke and mirrors, okay? Whereas the overt narcissist is more vocal, big, brash, in your face. You know, it's obvious they love themselves. It's obvious they're proud of the car. They're, this. they're always bragging, okay? The covert, okay, rather than the covert brag about his nice car, he will do things like, he will say things like, he will get, he will say things that make you have to say, oh no, your car's gorgeous, it's beautiful, you've got a gorgeous car. They're so sly and manipulative. So they will go around inspiring ways, okay, in which to get you to do and say the things they want, they need from you, okay? So if they need, if they're feeling angry, a covert narcissist, for example, won't necessarily just come out and be angry with you, okay? Instead, they will transfer that onto you. So they will do things that they know will make you angry. So when you flip out and you're being angry, okay, that's what they enjoy. It's about transferring how they feel onto you, okay? So if they feel um, enraged or I can't think of anything off the top of my head, like really negative loud emotions that usually generate a lot of reactions so if they feel hurt or in distress right they can't just come out and say that so instead they will inspire ways to make you feel hurt and in distress and <clears throat> hysterical okay they, they are just disgusting so you trying to communicate to one that stop you're hurting me leave me alone that's fuel okay that's interpreted by the narcissist as you're just being spiteful, okay? You possibly don't mean it. You don't get to walk away, <clears throat> and excuse me, you don't get to walk away until I say you can walk away. If you want one to leave you alone, it has to be by your actions. And this is why in my videos, I speak about emotions and reactions and boundaries so much. Because if you can master those, okay, before I go on digging into narcissism and talking about the narcissistic brain and how it operates, okay, if, if already you have your boundaries, emotions and reactions in check and you really know yourself, you're beyond powerful. You cannot be manipulated. If you are in control of your emotions and reactions, you cannot be manipulated, okay? Because even if somebody at the side of you is feeling angry and they want to inspire that you feel that anger, okay? Because they're a freak and can't express it. Because you're aware of your own emotions and reactions and about how and of how you're feeling at that moment, nobody can do that to you, okay? So you do need to master your own reactions and emotions in order to fend off a narcissist or other toxic individual. So we'll get back to what I'm supposed to be saying. So you need to change your pattern. If you've got one coming after you day after day after day under numerous accounts on YouTube, you need to change your pattern, okay? Ideally, I would suggest disappearing for four to six weeks. Really drag that rug from underneath the narcissist's feet. Hit them with something that they're not going to see coming, okay? Take your power back because they know your pattern. So they know, they know everything. So you've got to switch that so they don't know anything. Change it all around. You take control back. So me personally, I disappear for four to six weeks. People wouldn't hear a peep out of me. If they were contacting my real life, I'd obviously take the precautions, document it all, do what I need to do, okay? You cannot ever come online and ever acknowledge them. You can't acknowledge them with posts, passive aggressive posts, slyly aimed at them, or they might be aimed at them, or they could be aimed at them. You can't be posting anything, anything, okay? Because if we're serious about getting rid of this narcissistic individual, we have to be serious and d deal with it properly, okay? You cannot be posting quotes or memes or anything that the narcissist may assume is about them okay you can't be posting things saying how happy you are okay because again 
you may be posting that to grandstand. I don't care about you. Look how happy I am. You can't be playing those type of games. You are playing with a master manipulator. They know exactly what you're doing. When I've said before, you cannot win, right? People hear me say that and they're just like, yeah, whatever. Okay. Well, when they come into your life, okay, and they start affecting your job, your friends, your real life, your partner, okay, places where you frequent, when they have taken enough from you, then maybe, okay, maybe then you will understand what I mean by you can't win, okay? You win by not playing by their rules because if they're doing things to make you angry and you get angry to them or give them a reaction, you're playing their game. Fuck that, okay? We're going to play our own game over here. Take control, take charge, and we're not going to play their game. Once you step in ground zero, which again I've mentioned in other videos, ground zero is the point in which the narcissist says something to you and you go and you say something back. Once you say something back, game over, okay? They want your reactions and your emotions. It's imperative and it's of such like phenomenal importance. You shut your reactions down you shut your mouth okay because you have to go what's called no contact except on the internet and in communities it's going to be that little bit more difficult because it's tougher to do okay shutting them out of your real life you know you've got the police and you've got other things you can help you know if it's like in your area in in the real world you've got things you can utilize or tools that you that can help you if necessary online it's a little bit different they can keep making accounts they can still come and watch you whenever they want but what you do today will matter four years down the line because the longer you keep the back and forth going the longer you keep the back and forth going okay Say, okay, say if you've known a narcissist for six months, <laughs> it's not unusual for it to take two years to get rid of them, okay? They keep coming back for up to 10 years. That's typically what they say. In my case, it's been longer than 10 years and I still have one coming back every so often just to check, can they still fuck with me? Messing with my neighbours, like I said, my local store. I mean, they've approached one of my children's friends parents they got the kid my kid's friend well not my kid's friend she doesn't really know but this they got this kid they got this kid to go into school with this horrendous letter to my kid about me and i haven't seen this person since my youngest was oh god what would she have been fuck well so it's it's got to be it's got to be it's got to be i haven't been in a room with that person should i say for god it must be now it must be about nine years but i have been away and that that was because of the girls or whatever having having to have contact that person still will try to come and hoover or work their way back into my life trying different angles all the time and like i just said sending getting another kid to go into school with messages about me to my kid okay so don't you can't underestimate like i don't know why like do you know who i right when i first came around youtube and i started talking about narcissism and trying to help people and educate people right this kind of pisses me off I was doing it to try and help people because I could see them having issues. They were being psychologically affected and it hurt and triggered me watching it go on and not doing anything, right? Over time, the term narcissist now has been turned into a joke. Everybody's calling everyone a narc, right? But then when a real narc shows up, everybody's watered the name down, made it a joke. They're doing the same with gaslighting. They're doing the same with the word triggered. They're doing the same with... What, what other word have they, they've, they've done it with? psycho okay so then when a true person that is behaving in a psycho manner shows up or a crazy manner well it's like the boy that's cried wolf i'm just like but you call everyone crazy so how am i supposed to know that this crazy is the serious one and the others you were just saying it because you were mad 
anyway that's just a rant in the middle of this so if they're dealing with you if you're dealing with one of these online it's going to be a lot tougher okay so it's even more important that your reactions are shut down if you have mods in a chat say if you have your own channel you will have to make sure that those mods uh, you will have to neighbor walking past with a dog barking you'll have to make sure those mods under no uncertain term under no uncertain terms mention their name if accounts start coming in your chat and you have any vague notion that it may it may be the person that's harassing you you block them immediately it's not mentioned never mentioned never 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 mentioned publicly okay if 200 accounts come in your chat okay they're blocked calmly you continue you do not even acknowledge them don't say oh well i know who that is yeah well i think we all know who that is nobody can be doing that okay it has to be and you can't be telling your plans on how you're handling it publicly either keep stung the idea is to put the narcissist in a position of the unknown okay they don't know what's coming next they don't know what you're going to do how you're going to react because they know you remember so now you have to reverse that that you have to stop doing the things that they know you're going to do so if you had mods okay they block every single account doesn't matter if 400 accounts come in block keep going block 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 doesn't need to be announced just block and carry on okay if they if their name's mentioned the name can't be mentioned in the chat anywhere so you would have to speak to your um members or your um you know the like your friends that come in you'd have to tell them behind the scenes do not be mentioning this person do if you come in my stream you can't be mentioning this person i am now what's known as no contact no contact even stretches to the confines of your own mind and brain not only does no contact mean no talking about them no addressing them no nothing it also means every time you catch yourself thinking about them you have to stop that thought in its tracks and change it to something else something positive that's directly about you okay so for example god we used to have some good times i really miss that person i wish it didn't end the way it did no that person is toxic was bad for my health what have I got to do today? I need to go to the store. I need to walk the dog. I'm going to go and make a hot drink. Okay. Every time the thoughts of that person enter your mind. Okay. You need to stop those thoughts in their tracks, reverse them and relay new thought patterns because all of that that they did at the beginning, creating the trauma bond. Okay. Keeping you on that high. All right. That's what that was for. So that when they've gone, okay, or they're giving you the silent treatment or stonewalling, all your mind thinks about is them. It causes us to ruminate. The trauma bond causes us to ruminate about that individual when they're not around. So you have to take an active um, approach to dealing with the rumination. Don't allow the rumination about that narcissistic individual to run away with itself. Stop it, reverse it and change it for something healthier that's about you. Because what the narcissist has done as well at the beginning, they get you to forget about yourself, okay? At first, yeah, they might be asking you a lot of questions and they seem like they really want to get to know you, but they make you forget about yourself because you become consumed with only caring about what they think, what they like, what they might be up to, what they think about this, what they think about that. Would they like this? Did they not like that? Have they ever tried one of these? Do you know, they just fill your mind with them so that when they've gone, they're stuck in your mind. You can't get them out of your head. You just cannot get them out of your head. So you miss the high because the high's gone. They're no longer giving you the high, filling your mind up with all these feel-good chemicals, right? And because they've become the focus of your life, your thoughts, it's kind of like you learn 
to always think about them okay and it, and it becomes a habit okay if you always text in the morning or you always text last thing at night okay those are the kinds of things they implement so that when they're not around okay maybe when they're giving you the silent treatment or they're having a little tiff all right because most of the arguments that they create it's again about profiling you okay to see what they can get away with how you react and how easy you are to psychologically fuck with okay so when they've gone they're stuck in your mind because they've made sure throughout the friendship okay to do things at pivotal moments so that when they're not there you miss them harder okay you crave them you want them back you crave them you crave them and often that's why it, there's a lot of making up and breaking up making up and breaking up okay the trauma bonds you can't escape okay you cannot escape they become addicted to you okay your energy your um narcissistic fuel or supply and you become addicted to their attention because they're very tender at the beginning very charismatic they're very kind of like gentle um very interested in you okay anyway so back to the after bit this is just feels like it's going all over i hope this video comes out okay because it's just gone on too long as well so after so you cannot be mentioning them okay we're no contact no contact exists up to the mind it's not just in the physical world it's in your mind okay so no contact your mods have to block them nobody in the chat can be talking about them anybody comes in saying the name there can be absolutely no reaction you need to be um like a gray rock okay you need to be like a gray rock still and boring whenever that person shows up now when they first show up all right at first because obviously the narcissist knows that you're playing a new game they understand that you're not doing what you usually would do or what they've profiled you to do okay so at first nothing may happen all right but the longer it goes on that you're not giving them any attention okay you've done the disappearing for four to six weeks you've come back the name's not allowed to be mentioned anytime a hundred troll accounts show up every single one's blocked nobody gives a reaction anywhere no one mentions the name no one starts getting bored or annoyed because that's what they work on they will work on getting you fed up um wound up and exasperated okay you have to remain as still and as boring as a grey rock. So if you're talking about dogs, for example, on your stream and they come in, continue talking about the dogs. Pay no mind to them coming into the stream. Boring, dull, uninterested. They may start sending flying monkeys, okay? Friends of theirs, okay, that have no clue they've been recruited as flying monkeys so the narcissist will tell their flying monkeys <clears throat> all these things about you that will stir up these flying monkeys, okay? Which, who will then in turn start bringing you messages perhaps, okay? Or coming to attack you on the narcissist's behalf or trying to um, mess with you on the narcissist's behalf. Okay, even the flying monkeys, you have to cut off. Okay, so you can't be reacting to them. You can't be giving them a whole load of emotion and telling them to F off, swearing at them, shouting, how dare you come in here? What they say? Don't come in here mentioning that name. How dare you? None of that. Still dull, boring, like a great rock. Keep that up. Okay, they may try. If they're doing things in your real life, you can't come online talking about it. You're only, and I know it's horrible, I've been harassed in my real life. Try getting the police to do something about somebody going in your local store asking questions about you. Try getting the police to do something about somebody going around other mums at school asking them questions and, and saying stuff about you. It's not unless it's like a consistent pattern of harassment which in my case it's always sporadic they pop up do a whole load of stuff and then disappear again okay you can't do anything 
You can't do anything because they will harass you via a third party. So they will use flying monkeys to do it on their behalf. Either some of them know what they're doing. They know that they're, you know, they're, they're like little soldiers, foot soldiers. But other flying monkeys will be completely unaware that they're being manipulated into coming over to you and maybe harassing you or passing on messages or telling you how cruel you are. No contact with all of them. You have to cut all of them off. Cut them all off. You cannot be communicating with any mutual friends. I don't know how tough that would be online. But if you want to get rid of the narcissist at the end of it, okay? If you don't want to be still stuck here in two years time, three years time, okay? Trying to get this person to stop harassing you. You need to take action now. So you need to cut all contact, cut all emotions, cut all reactions. If you have something specific, like a question that I maybe haven't covered, you can either message me on Discord or you can leave a comment below and ask me below. I'm trying to think if I have covered enough in this so that it would be beneficial to someone possibly going through that and watching this. They're awful, okay? You can't ever explain to people how bad a narcissist is and how bad they mess with your life and psycho and how they the psychological terrorism that comes with them, okay? You can't people laugh when you try to explain how horrendous and hideous their targeting is, okay? A narcissist they have sociopathic tendencies, okay? They are sadistic. They like triggering people. They like to see hurt, anger, jealousy, envy, pain. It's not about just the flattery and the adulation, admiration, and, um, you know, all the fandom praising them, okay? They love, absolutely love. And I would say, in my experience, they love the negative emotions more than they love the positive ones. Okay? So if you're giving them a lot of negative emotions, expect them to stay around longer. If you want rid of them, if you want rid of them and your life matters to you, you've lost enough disappearing for four to six weeks, okay, off social media, what means more to you? Because this time next year, okay, you could possibly be free of them or you can stay online for the next four to six weeks and see how that goes. You need to change your pattern. You need to have them not know what your next move is. You need to have them understand that you're not going to give them a reaction. And like I said before, at first they may do nothing because they'll be a bit puzzled, right? But once they realise that you're changing what you normally do, expect them to come back full force, okay? You're like a toddler because um, narcissists are emotionally stunted. They stop, They their emotional intelligence stops, I'd say, between the ages of possibly seven to 12, okay? So they have the emotional understanding and intelligence of a child, literally. So like when you're teaching a toddler no and they paddywhack and then you give them the biscuit, right? Then the next time you tell them no, they paddywhack and you don't give them the biscuit. They don't stop the paddywhack, they double the paddywhack. And then if you give them the biscuit after the double paddywhack, okay? Then the next time they want a biscuit and you tell them no, they do the paddywhack. They say no again, they do the double paddywhack. The double paddywhack doesn't work this time. So they will try for a triple, quadruple paddywhack to see if they'll still get the biscuit, okay? And if it's that time that you've decided that no, actually, you're not going to get the biscuit this time, it is a no, okay? They will triple that to get you to give in, to give the biscuit. The narcissist works the same, okay? So they may be quiet at first, <clears throat> but they will come back hard. And it takes a narcissist a very long time to learn that they're not going to get something from you. And at some point, when they learn that they're not going to get something from you, it wounds them, it hurts them, because they've profiled you wrong, okay? That pain, they don't like that pain. That's the pain they're running from, okay? They don't like that pain. So once it hits them where it needs to, 
that they're not going to get anything from you, once that hits them, they will leave you alone. However, okay, however, like I said earlier, if you've known a narcissist or been in a relationship with one for six months, expect two years of them coming back at different intervals to try and find a new way to work their way into your life but they might do it under the guise of pretending to be someone else because it's online they might do it and say well you know for the last six months i've been really thinking about my behavior and i'm just so sorry for all the things i put you through it's more manipulation stick with the profile if you have profiled somebody to be what you believe a narcissist okay and they tick all this criteria the sadism the, the the one the sadistic triggering the um on on again off again the idealizing the having no boundaries the passive aggression the emotional manipulation side of it the lies stick with what you've seen do not allow the cognitive dissonance to creep in six months down the line or nine months down the line where you second guess yourself and think do you know what maybe i made a mistake maybe some of that was me it wasn't you it wasn't you do not do that do not make that mistake of thinking okay they seem okay now and it's been a long time i don't like being horrible to people so i'm going to give them another chance do not fall for it okay this video is so long I hope I've covered anything. If I haven't, if I've missed anything, please would you be so kind to just maybe leave a question or add something at the bottom. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. It's actually gone really cold now. I'm shivering. Um, leave me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Consider subscribing if you haven't. And thank you so much for joining me. Bye for now.